Learn to grow the very best wheatgrass at home in soil from us. We've been growing wheatgrass commercially since 1991 on our organic farm. We are Gerald and Carolyn Gibson of Dogwood Gardens Organic Farm. We are one of the oldest and largest growers of organic wheatgrass grown in soil since 1991. Now we also grow other vegetables when they're in season and we specialize in pollinator plants for honeybee keepers here in Texas. Gerald is the wheatgrass man. When he makes his deliveries at health food stores and juice bars, they say, here comes the wheatgrass man, wheatgrassman.com. We have grown somewhere around 300 to 400,000 of the best organic wheatgrass trays over the years. We traded in this white truck with 413,000 miles on it and traded in for a larger yellow truck in 2009. We were leaders in supplying floral designers with designer wheatgrass in a five-state area. We custom uh, grew wheatgrass for different designers for conventions and presentations. Here's a greenhouse full of uh, wheatgrass that we custom grew for a designer for a convention in Houston in the mid-90s. Everything from table runners to centerpieces, your imagination is your limit. We know how to grow wheatgrass. Now, even though we grow in the greenhouse, I have spent many days growing in my kitchen to give you the best growing instructions. Wheat seed is called wheat berries. This is the same wheat berries that you can buy in health food stores to grind up and make flour. This is your most important purchase. Now, wheat berries that you buy in the stores is meant to be ground into flour and not to grow wheatgrass. Germination rate may be poor. When you do not have good germination, you will have sparse wheatgrass. Sparse germination could also be caused by not enough seed planted, not well watered in the early germination period, or just bad seed. Good wheatgrass seed produces great wheatgrass. Temperature is everything. Your wheatgrass may grow in five to seven days or 10 to 15 days, depending on the temperature. Now the ideal temperature is between 70 and 80 degrees, which will give you wheatgrass ready to cut in 10 days. Now if the temperature gets up around 90 to 100 or more, it will be ready in seven days or less. Okay, are you ready to start with your wheatgrass? Okay, first thing, uh, you're going to measure your seed or wheat berries, and that's going to be about one and a half cups. Now, you're going to wash the seed in cold water to remove debris and wheat dust. Okay, you're going to soak it in a quart jar or what every other container you have all day or about eight to ten hours. Now, the seed will swell, so you need to have plenty of room for it to swell. Now, how much it swells will depend on the temperature and how long you have soaked it. Now, the purpose of soaking your seed is to help all the seeds sprout at the same time and to soften the seed coat. Now, you can, after you've soaked the seed for 8 to 12 hours all day, then you need to drain the seed all night for 8 to 10 hours. You can attach a cheesecloth to your mason jar or use the uh, sprouting lids. Now, I prefer to just put my seed in the colander and to really rinse it really well. Now, if I'm using the colander method, I will cover it with a paper towel and then moisten that paper towel to retain the moisture. Now, metabolic waste is developed during the sprouting process. Rinse and removes this waste, and you want to rinse it until the water runs clear. Now, you could actually go ahead and plant it, but you drain the seed all night. It helps the seed to spread better. Wet seed is almost impossible to spread on top of the soil because it all clumps together. Whereas if your seed is slightly damp, it will spread much easier. Okay, day two, you're ready to start planting the seed. Now, you want to spread your soil in the tray, you know, about two quarts of soil, about two inches deep. 
We use the nursery trays with hose. The purpose of water is not just to keep the seed and soil wet. As water goes through the seed and the soil, out through the hose, it is drawing oxygen into the soil. Now you want to kind of spray the soil as you go. Dry soil is almost impossible to get wet all the way through. Now you can uh, go to your kitchen sink and use the spray head there if you're not worried about dirt in your sink. If you have the option of wetting the soil outside, you can spray it using the mist setting to avoid moving the soil around. Now you want to poke a hole in the tray of soil and it might surprise you, you might find a dry spot. You do not want those tender roots hitting dry soil. Now you want to spread the sprouted seed and you'll notice the little white tips are, are already starting on the seed. And you want to go ahead and just kind of spread out any little bare spots you happen to come along and even it out. Now you want to spray it with a spray bottle until all the seed is completely soaked. Or if you're able to take it outside, use the misting setting on your outside sprayer. Now the first three or four days, you need to spray it at least two or three times a day to keep the seed wet at all times. Seed needs to be kept at least between 60 and 70 degrees to sprout. Now they will eventually sprout at a lower temperature, but it will take much longer. Now day two, you may think there's not much going on. Now by day three, you're going to see the little roots and sprouts are forming. And day four, you can see, you'll just be surprised how much progress it has made. Now you will notice your wheat grass roots will start going into the soil. Now at this time, you may need to start watering with a sprayer in your kitchen sink. Your spray bottle will not be effective getting water all the way through to the soil. Now you can use a water can, but that's harder. And it's not just that you want to get the water all the way through to the soil because if you're spraying, you're just getting the grass part wet and which can lead to mold. Now day five, you are going to really need to water till the water runs out of the bottom of the tray. Now at this time, you could start cutting back on the water and you want to lift your wheat grass at the corner and check the bottom of the tray. If the bottom of the tray is wet, don't water. If it looks like it's starting to dry, then you can water again. Now it only needs to remain completely wet during this first three or four day germination period. After that, it's good for the soil to draw out a little before watering again. Now it does not need to be in the dark during the germination process. Now, it's just amazing how much it has grown by day six. Just look at how much the mat has started to form. And just look how quickly it has grown by day seven. Is it ready to harvest? Now there's no magic timetable to tell you when it is ready to harvest. And Wigmore, who pioneered juicing wheatgrass, simply states that when it is six to 10 inches tall. Now others have said it is ready when it forms a second leaf. Now by day eight, now you could start harvesting at this point. You can see how tall the grass is. Uh, you can see how thick your mat is. Day nine. Now your wheat grass may or may not be this tall. It all depends on the temperature, the variety of seed, and the amount of sunlight it received. Now the taller wheat grass was grown in my kitchen around 75 to 80 degrees for 11 days. And it formed a new leaf around the 10th day. Now the taller wheat grass grown indoors has less sunlight, so it grows taller with thinner leaves. The more sunlight, the shorter and fatter the leaves will be. The taller wheat grass will not give you more juice than this shorter, fatter wheat grass grown in the greenhouse. The shorter wheat grass was grown in the greenhouse at 90 to 95 degrees for eight days and started splitting and forming a new leaf around eight days. Now do not confuse this second leaf stage with second joint stage. 
Second joint stage is only possible when you grow wheatgrass in the field and it is used to make the powdered wheatgrass. Now it may have a little bit more nutrition when it's grown in the field like that, but then you would only have wheatgrass one time a year. Whereas if you're growing it indoors, you have it all year round. Now sometimes the wheatgrass will get stunted during the growing process, and this is usually in the winter time, and will never ever get more than four to five inches tall. The leaves will be shorter, thicker, and the roots will become massive. Now massive roots form during cooler growing conditions, and leaves grow during warmer conditions. If you want your wheatgrass to last all week, it needs to be put in the refrigerator once it reaches its peak growth. As your wheatgrass matures, the tip of the blades become pointy and thinner. The blades become thinner and thinner and reaches its peak when the tips start turning white or tan and that wheatgrass loses its vibrant green. Ann Wigmore specified hard red winter wheat berries to grow wheatgrass. Now hard red winter wheat is used to make bread. She used the soft wheat berries, spring wheat, to make her famous rejuvelac. Spring wheat grows for a less period of time and is used in making pastries such as cakes and donuts. Now we buy in bulk direct from the farmer. This farmer does a germination test before we buy from him. We sell to you the same wheat seed that we use in our wheatgrass business, and we were the very first to know if the seed does not germinate. For the best wheatgrass, buy the best seed. Go to wheatgrassman.com. We've got wheatgrass seed. We've got a lot more information about wheatgrass. We've got its benefits. We have the free growing direction, so go to wheatgrassman.com. But don't be fooled by copycats like TheWheatGrassMan.com. We are WheatGrassMan.com. No, The. Go to WheatGrassMan.com for wheat seed that is grown for wheatgrass. And please subscribe and like our channel.